So our topic for today is, uh, I'll share it. What happens? What happens next? So, uh, so because of the things that happened for this uh, last year, since uh, 2020, so and then they said our major boom abandoning numbers, but in other countries, Sindipa, to the chat in the Philippines, dito sa Qatar, major mataas pa rin, Although marami na mga vaccinated, uh, we don't know. Many people are asking to themselves, or many people asking to God, what happens next? So, ano ba ang pwede nating uh, malaman? Paano natin malalaman? Ano susunod na hakbang natin after this? So, uh, for us to have this uh, information, so we have to know the facts and the God's promises about our future. So, this coming future, ano ba talaga ang plano ng Diyos para sa atin? Amen? So, God already know this. That's why uh, they, they, He gave us His promises. Actually, somebody said that there are more 7,000 promises of God written in the Bible for our for our future. So this 7,000 maybe he discussed not in this the whole day. Uh, that's why uh, set, uh, sit back and relax while we are discussing these uh, promises of God. So before we start, let's have a uh, prayer. Okay, so uh, let's uh, join me in uh, the prayer, short prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning that, you gather, that you've gathered us again, your children. It is our great blessing to talk to you and to listen to you on your detailed instructions on how and what to do next in this life. Give us your spirit of wisdom to understand the words, open our hearts that we may keep your words and share it or even to be seen through our lives. O oh God, our Father, let your words be seen and not the speaker. Let our hearts with, joy, hearts with joyful engagement with your words. We honor you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right. Amen. So what happens next? So it is a uh, knowing the facts and the God's promises about our future. So why we should be interested on this in knowing the facts and God's promises about our future? We should be interested on in this for three reasons. One, first, the rest of your life is in the future. Amen? None of your life is left in the past or even today. All our life is in the future. Second, you don't know what's going to be. Hindi po natin alam kung ano mangyayari in the future. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. Much, much less next year. Amen? And the third, you certainly cannot control it. So, hindi po natin kayang kontrolin yung future natin. One of the ways we try to control our future is to worry. But worry is worthless. It doesn't work at all. Amen? So, yung po yung uh, dahilan. Ba't kailangan natin maging interesado dito sa... Um, uh, God's promises about our future. But before we discuss the uh, God's promises in our future, we have to discuss these four facts about our future. So these four facts, I know some of us already know this. This is just a review. But these four facts about our future will give us a foundation for looking about God's promises. Amen? So four facts about our future. Number one, God knows everything that will happen. God knows everything that will happen. He knows the beginning and the end. This is called the omniscience of God. That means God knows everything. In practical sense, ito po yung sinasabi nun. God is never surprised. God, God never say that, wow, I didn't see that coming. Sa Tagalog, sinasabi natin, hala. Amen? Or sinasabi ni iba, uy, shock ako dun ah. So those words never says by, hindi po sinasabi ng Panginoon yun. So God never says those kind of things. God knows everything you're gonna say in life. God knows every thought you're gonna think in life. God knows 
what you're going to do in life, and God knows uh, everything in life. There's nothing that you, you do that he doesn't already know. Even, even our, at the end of our life, he knows when it is. So this is hard to get, but please bear with me in explaining this. So God is not limited by time. God is timeless. Our concept of time is based because it's based on because we are in the planet that turns around every 24 hours and it goes around the sun every 365 days, which is one year. But if we are in the different planet, of course, it is more bigger or more, uh, more, uh, more smaller, we would have a different concept of time. And if you weren't on the planet at all, you have a totally different concept of time. Or maybe you could be timeless. This is what uh, Einstein talked about in space-time continuum. So it's uh, about the, uh, 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 the place where you are. But God is timeless. God can be in the past, in the present, and in the future all at once. Because God isn't linear. It's all the same to him. He is in the past, he is in the present, and he is in the future at the same time. I know it is a hirap uh, grasp the information, yeah, but it's, like, it's kind of like this. Every December 18, so we have this parade in, uh, in Corniche. If you were be beside the, uh, the, um, the emir, okay, you are on the side in the chair of the emir, and you are watching the parade uh, uh, during uh, Qatar Day, you could see only the parade in front of you. You cannot see the parade that is uh, already passed, and you cannot see the parade that is, go that is coming in the future. All you can see is the one in front of you. And that's the way we uh, pretty much live our lives. On the other hand, if we were take up, if, if I will take you up in a helicopter above, or we will ride a hot balloon, hot air balloon, sorry, and we will really uh, get up really high with a different pers perspective, we would be able to see the beginning and in the end of the parade all at once, all at the same time. It's just a matter of perspective. But God is so high in heaven that he can see everything in history because he is uh, in heaven. He is so high. He has a different perspective. He can see the beginning, the middle, and in the end, all at the same time. It doesn't bother him because he has a different perspective. Because God knows everything will happen and he is not limited by time, we know these verses, Hebrew 11.13. In Hebrew 11.13, he says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid before his eyes. So there's no secret with God. Sometimes we people foolishly thinks, uh, hide things from God. So we don't, we don't have any secrets from God. God knows every good, every bad, every ugly part of your life, but he still loves you and loves you unconditionally. But you don't have any secrets from God. He even knows the thought that you're going to have. So iniisip mo pa lang, naisip niya na kung ano yung iisipin mo. So because he knows what is going to happen. In Psalm 139 verse 16 says this, The days allotted to me, which in our lifespan, had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Okay? God already knows what's going to happen in every day of your life, before, even, even before you take your first breath. When you were in your mother's womb, God says, I already knew what, what every detail or every second of every moment of your life. You know, sabi ng Lord. By the way, uh, this, that's why the abortion is very wrong. Why? Because abortion short circuits God's plan for your life. When your life began, when God taught you up, and when he taught you up, every day of your life was planned before you were born. And so, if you end up not being born, then God's plan just get aborted. That's why it's wrong. 
Now, uh, let's go to the second thing that we know, the second fact about our future. God's plan for my life is good. Just like uh, the song says, uh, God is so good. Okay? So, it is that, of course, God's plan for my future is good. It is not a bad plan. Planned. In fact, God has no bad plan in our life or for his people. God is so good. And because God is so good, all his plans are good. And one of the uh, most famous verses in the Bible is this uh, uh, about uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. This is the most uh, famous, I mean, uh, most re read verses in the Bible. We read it hundreds of times here in TFCMI, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope and the future. So look at the words. Know, plan, and future. What this tells us. God tells us that he thought more about your future than you have. So, mas naiisip pa ng Panginoon yung future natin kesa sa pag-iisip natin. Sometimes may mga tao na uh, hindi po nila iniisip kung ano yung future nila. Hindi sila nagpaplano para sa future nila. They just uh, make life happen to them. It's like they are skating through life. It's like coasting through life. So, it's like their life is a routine. Like, Kain, tulog, gala, kain, tulog, gala, or party, and die. So sa mga mayayaman po yan. Pero sa mga hindi po pinalad, konting kain, konting tulog, and die. So napakahirap po. That's why may mga tao po. No? There, there are people that really, uh, they don't know that there is God that can, uh, that has a good plans for their life. Just like the verse said, Good plans for your future and plans to prosper you and plans to give you hope in the future. So if we really angkinin ang ang pangako ng Panginoon na to, it really will help us a lot. Okay. So, well, you can say, can I miss God's plan? Pwede ba nating mamiss ang God's plan? Of course, we can. In fact, most people miss God's plan because they choose their own plan. You have to choose God's plan in your life. Why? Because it's not automatic. So one of the greatest gifts that God has gave us, but also sometimes it becomes hindrance to us, is the freedom to choose. God did not want to create a bunch of puppets. Amen? Actually, he could make us where we don't have any choice. We could not choose to do bad. We could not choose to do other things, but his, he made us in his own image, which means he gave us free will and every day we can make choices. The problem is we often make bad choices. And it doesn't force, and God doesn't force you to do his plans and purpose. He created you and God wanted is he didn't want puppets. He wanted children who choose to love him and you can't say it's real love unless you have choice to not love. So, ang, 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 ang Panginoon po is, hindi, siya, hindi niya tayo ginawang robot na magawa lahat ng kagustuhan niya. Binigyan, ta, binigyan niya tayo ng uh, kalayaan para pumili ng tama. But yun nga, ang masaklap, uh, karamihan po ng tao sa mundo is mali po yung napipili. So, uh, bakit po kaya? No? Ang tanong, bakit po kaya mamimiss ng tao yung uh, plano ng, ng Diyos sa buhay niya? It's just one word. We call it pride. Yung pong pride. Pride keeps people, or keeps you from fulfilling the purpose of God that made you for. Pride shows like this. It's like, I know God has planned for my life, but I think I better know than God, and I think I know what will make me happy more than God, and I'm going to disobey what God, what He says to do, and I'm going to do what I want to do. So, karamihan po, yun ang mga 
uh, mga taong hindi nakakakilala sa Diyos or yung mga taong ini-ignore ang Panginoon, yun po ang sinasabi nila. And that's called pride. So it is an arrogance to think that a, a person knows better than God. Than God. So it's like this. I know God says, uh, I know God says this about sex, but I'm gonna do it on my way. And I, I know God what says about the money, but I'm gonna do it in my way. And I know God says about my future and my goals. And I know what God says to forgive people instead of resentful or retaliate, but I'm gonna do it in my way. And that's called arrogance or called ego or pride. The only thing that causes you to miss God's purpose is uh, is your own ego and your own pride. So if you think you know better than God. And this this has caused much uh, problem. Instead of plans to prosper and plans to uh, have hope and plans to have a good in your future, the person ends up in a real mess in his life. So now let me encourage you. You can miss God's purpose in your life if you really want it if you say god i'm willing to do whatever you say to do i'm willing to trust you i don't understand it at all and 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 some and some you may tell me to do may look like it doesn't make sense but i'm gonna do it because i want your plan instead of my own plan if you do that you can't miss god's plan for your life next The third facts about uh, your future. I must choose to trust and obey God. This is the fact. I must choose to trust and obey God. God knows everything going to happen in, uh, in our life. God, he has a good plan for, my, for our life. And I have to choose that plan. And have, I have to choose to trust God. And I have to choose to obey God. So every single day of my life, God's given me a free choice. Amen? Or us. So pwede natin pumili ng plan ng Lord or piliin natin yung sarili nating plan. Or uh, sundin natin yung sinasabi sa atin ng Panginoon o sundin natin yung gusto natin gawin. Or sundin natin yung sinasabi ng Biblia or sundin natin kung ano yung sa tingin natin tama. So you have choice. But every day we're making this choice. Here's the Bible says about uh, 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 choosing. God says this in Deuteronomy uh, 30.19. Chapter 30.19. What God says, Today I am giving you the choice between life and death. God said, do you want to really live a life or do you want a dead end life? It's up to you. Between blessings or curses, or you want to have a blessed life or do what tells you to do, or you want to have a coarse life with all kinds of problems. So just do your own thing. And it says, I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. So sinabi niya na, uh, gusto kong ma-witness ng uh, creation kung ano ang uh, choices na gagawin mo. So ang sabi niya, so with his uh, uh, love in his heart, sinabi niya, so choose life. Choose life, of course. Why? Why would anybody choose a dead end or destruction or death and to be separated from God who made you and loves you and created you? Why would anybody do that? So he says, choose life. And then, And said, he, he said, then you and your children will live. He's saying that your choices would make, uh, your choices in life will really affect your uh, next generation, your, uh, the, 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 the kids on your generation. So that it will be really a blessing for them if you choose life. That's what God says. Now here's the fourth fact. God will be with me in every step of the way. God will be with me in every step of the way. In my future, I don't know what's going to be like, and I know that I cannot control it, but I know this. God will be with me every step of the way. How do I know this? Because in the Bible, hundreds of times it is repeated, the promise of God. 
this is his promise of God. Promise of God. You're gonna be. You're not gonna be alone. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be. I will never be abandon you. I'm gonna be with you. My presence will be with you. He says it uh, hundreds of times in the Bible. I'm going to be with you, because God made you to be connected to Him. Now you may not always feel God. Uh, you may not always feel God's presence, but God is not a feeling. Uh, something doesn't have to be felt for it to be real. Like, for example, all of us now in the front of the computer and our computer or in our cell phone, uh, our devices are connected to the internet. So the this airspace that surrounds us, there are radio waves, there are uh, internet waves that is floating in our front. It, it, it passes through our body. We cannot feel them, but it is real. If we have this only uh, receiver for the uh, uh, microwave, uh, microwave uh, waves, so microwaves, kung makikita yan sa receiver, makikita yan dumadaan sa katawan natin. But we cannot feel it, but it is real. Many things in, in this earth is cannot be seen, but it is real, and cannot be felt, but it is real. Atoms and protons are real, and we cannot see it. And every, everything is made of atoms and protons. And so I may not feel God. I may not sense God, but he is always with me. So now that's, the, that's an encouragement. Because although I don't know what the future holds, what I do know is I'm not going to face it alone. Amen? So lagi po natin kasama ang Panginoon. Kahit hindi natin alam kung ano mangyayari in the future. God says in Hebrew 13, verse 5 and 6, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. In other words, don't be greedy. Because God has said, Never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. So, tinignan ko po itong word the never sa Greek word. It means never. Never pa rin po. So never, never, never. Not in a thousand, a thousand years. Never. Uh, God will never leave us. So that means you're never going to be without me. Other people may abandon you. God says, I won't. Other people may, may betray you. God says, I won't. Now, why, he do, why does he tie this on the, with regards on the money and be contented with what you have? Well, God says, if I'm here with you, what are you worried about? Do you think I'm not going to take care of your needs? So naalala ko po yung father ko, yung tatay ko nung araw. Kapag lumalabas po kami ng bahay, pag inaasik, may inaasikaso kami papeles sa labas at inaabot kami ng tanghalian, tapos kakain kami sa karinderya, pagkakain namin... Alam ko na confident ako na hindi po ako yung magbabayad sa cashier. Kasi kasama ko yung tatay ko. So I never pay, I never pay if my dad is with me. Kaya pag naglalakad kami ng papeles, mas gusto ko kasama ko yung tatay ko kasi of course, uh, pag inabot kami ng tanghalian, hindi ako yung magbabayad. So alam kong secured ako na hindi ako magi spend Same way with our heavenly Father. He said, "Hey, if I'm with you, what are you worried about? Are you worried about your bills? Do you think that I'm, I'm not going to help you uh, through this? So we should be confident with the, if, if we know that God is with us. Our Father, Heavenly Father is with us. Amen? So he says, I never leave you nor forsake you. So we can say with confidence, so Christians can be the most confident when it comes in the future because it says here, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. And what can people do to me? So it's, it's like one plus God is a majority. So if God's like me, I like me, you don't like me, what's the problem? So no problem. God's like me. Okay. God says, I'll be with you and, love, and I love you. So no matter what happens in your life or in your future, you're going to you're not going to go through it alone. So this, this comforting truth is called 
the faithfulness of God. Amen? The faithfulness of God. That God is not only a good God, but also He is a faithful God. That means He keeps His word and He always does what, what's good in your life. It is a part of His character that He keeps every promise. Now, uh, I want you to remember or write this in your journal. If you are struggling with anxiety or any worries, I want you to know this. Every fear is a misunderstanding of who God is and what his promise. Every fear is a misunderstanding of who God is and what his promise. So if you know, if you knew what God is like and you knew what his promise, you would not be afraid. You would not be anxious about your future and you would not be worried or nervous or what's going to happen tomorrow. Because if you really knew who God is and what his promise to do in your life, you would not be afraid. Amen. So those are the four facts about our future. Let's go now to the God's promises about your future. Number one, God's promises to God, to, uh, about our future. Number one is God's promises to guide me when I'm confused. God promises to guide me when I'm confused. One thing that you can predict, the only thing that you can predict in the future is you're going to have a lot of decisions to make. You got a lot of choices. And some of those choices are difficult. And some of them are even confusing. It's like... Do I have to take this job? Should I work abroad? Should I buy this house? Should I marry this girl? There are some big life-changing decisions. And a, lot, and a lot of time, we can be confused about them. So we can be confused because they are scary decisions. And those are scary decisions because we are afraid. So if you decide like this, and sometimes you will think, what will happen if I make a wrong, de a wrong decision or a wrong choice? And sometimes because we are afraid, we, uh, we get stuck and cannot decide in our confusion. And we think, kanino ba ako pwedeng mag, uh, mag, magsabi ng problema or humingi ng advice? So where can I, where can I talk to or whom I cannot talk to? Is there anybody who can help me in thinking this through? In one end, Maybe you can think that you can talk to your friends. But one of the problem is they, they may probably think just like you do. That's why they are your friends. You're probably both confused. So it's better you can talk to the elders. But right after you consult the only one authority who is always right and completely reliable. And that is our creator. If you want to know something in the invention, you must ask the inventor. Amen? And God knows the purpose that he created you for. So here's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not Trust in yourself with all of your heart. It should be trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you're, you do, and he will show you the right way. Let, let me ask you one thing. Who do you really trust deep down in your heart? Who you really trust deep down in your heart? He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. If you'll trust him with all of your heart, he will show you the right way. Why trust God? Well, think about it. He created you. He loves you. He knows everything about you. He gave his son to die for you. If, he, if God did all those things and cares that much about you, why in the world that he will send you to a direction that was not best for you? So God wants the best for you. He is completely reliable and trustworthy 
and he has a perspective about your life and your future that you desperately need to have. It's like when you're driving when you're driving a car in in a in a road going to Baguio. What do you call that road? Uh, Cannon Road. Okay, road going to Baguio. It's the zigzag road. So if you were in a hurry and you get stuck behind a uh, slow moving minibus full of passengers and it's cruising along like 30 kilometers per hour and he is not in a hurry to get anywhere so you cannot overtake because you don't have any idea on what's coming on that road and you think sometimes you you, you dream like man is there any uh, helicopter that or any man that can ride the helicopter and fly above our road so that uh, he can read to you to me that uh, the, the, the road is safe. So it's like uh, there is a perspective that you can see what's coming. So that's the perspective that we need to have. And the only way to get that, uh, that perspective is from God's word, in his word. It is in the Bible. The will of God is in the word of God. If you want to know uh, God's will, you have to know God's word. So now let's uh, talk the second promise of God about your future. The second promise of God about our future is God promises to help me when I'm tempted. God promises to help me when I'm tempted. This is the second great promise about our future. God promises help me to help me when I'm tempted. So another thing that's gonna uh, that's not gonna change in our future is we're gonna have the same old temptation. I hate to tell you that, but really, uh, hopefully, we're gonna get better at resisting them when we grow in Christ. Okay, but we're gonna have the same temptation in the future. Usually, those weakness that we have today. As I said, hopefully we get better as we grow in Christ. So that may use as a temptation uh, in our life. That's why we have we always pray that uh, God lead us not to temptation. Okay? And God promises to help you. This is the good thing. So let me give you the bad news, the good news, and the great news about temptation. Sorry. The bad news is you'll never you'll never gonna outgrow temptation. Some people think that maybe I'll get to the point in my spiritual life that I am not tempted anymore. It never happened. Fat chance. You're gonna be tempted for the rest of your life. Ask those as those uh, uh, people who walk with the Lord for many years. Ask our elders. The more they grow as a Christian the more they are tempted by the enemy. Because the enemy doesn't bother you if you're not doing anything. But if you can make difference with your life, it's going to really go after you. And so actually, some of the temptations in your life, the mature you get, the, the more temptations you'll get. You just have a better resources how to deal with it. It doesn't mean when the temptations go away, that means you uh, you just don't give him give in to them anymore, and so they will actually increase. Sometimes uh, some of us carrying false shame because we think that we should be in the stage that we should not be tempted anymore. You say, "I should not have this feeling." Well. That's just not true because you are not responsible for every thought that comes to your mind. You are responsible on what you do you do with it. Okay, when Satan gives us an idea and puts it in our mind, that is called temptation. But when God gives up, uh, when God gives you an idea and suggests it in your mind, that is called inspiration. Temptation, inspiration. And then you have your own thoughts. So it's up to you what you will choose. Sometimes, uh, have you experienced uh, when you are praying and you're trying to be serious about 
praying for something and all of a sudden uh, the most ugly, awful thought comes into your mind while you are praying and you say, sa galing yun? Parang nabother ako ng gusto doon. So, parang ang pangit nung biglang pumasok sa isip mo while you are praying. Diba? That, that, does it happen to you? Okay? So, sometimes it happens. But you are not responsible for that. That is uh, th- that came from uh, the enemy. It was just an idea. So it's just an idea. Just ignore it. Okay. So don't don't uh, don't let it uh, play it into your mind. So because that is uh, a temptation. Sabi ni Martin Luther, uh, you cannot keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them building a nest in your hair. So pwede siya magpaikot-ikot dyan. But pwede mo siyang pigilan na magkaroon ng itlog or dumami sa ulo mo. Amen? So you should not feel guilty about the thought that you didn't have. Satan just threw it quickly in your mind. And, and when you identify it, that you know where it's coming from, get out of there. So alisin mo siya kagad and just toss it. That's why we need to fill our minds with holy things so that there is no place in our minds for Satan to intrude. Okay, so those are uh, 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 temptations. So we, ha- uh, we, we know now the bad news, which we're going to be tempted uh, for the rest of our lives. The good news is it's not a sin to be tempted. It is not a sin to be tempted. It is a sin to give, to give in to the temptation, but it is not a sin to be tempted. The Bible says Jesus was tempted in every point that we were but he never sinned. Amen? So temptation is just a choice. That's all it is. So don't be intimidated about, like, why I'm being tempted like this? So it is a choice. Well, because we're human. No, we can be tempted. That is why. It is just a choice. And every time you choose to do the, uh, the right thing, you grow. And every time you choose to, to do the wrong thing, you stumble, you fail, you go back. But the temptation is just an opportunity for us to grow. So don't be intimidated by it and don't be ashamed of it if you have temptations. Sometimes there are things that, uh, that just caught your attention. But if you identify it as an, a temptation, just let it pass by. It is not a sin. But if you play it on your mind and fantasize it or linger on it or think of lust, then it becomes a sin. Right? So remember this. Attraction is not a sin. Action is. Sometimes we are attracted in some things. Okay? Like if you are attracted in lechon. Okay? It's not a sin. Eating lechon, uh, isang kilong lechon is a sin, of course. So, uh, just be attracted is not a sin. So, kapag naisip mo na, temptation to, tataas ang blood pressure ko, you just go to the next uh, food. No? Kapag nasa buffet ka. Okay? So attraction is not a sin, action is. You can control what gets your attention, but you can control what keeps your attention. You see, you hear the difference? You, you, can't con- uh, you can control what gets your attention, but you can, you can control what keeps your attention. You can't. You cannot control what gets your attention, but you can control what keeps your attention. Amen? So it can be from person or it can be from an opposite sex or same sex or even from material things. So those are uh, temptations. But if you uh, give into it, then it becomes a sin. Now, we said that the bad news, is, of course, we have the bad news, the good news. And the great news is God has promised to provide a way of temptation. The Bible says, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, remember that the temptations that come into your life are no different from what others experience. Okay, Remember the temptation that comes into your life are no different from what others experience. Now, I know what Satan tells you. It's like this. Nobody else feels like you do. Or nobody is tempted in this way. So Satan wants to isolate you. The Bible says, no, 
we all have the same exact temptations. Now, if we if they are common to human, then they there are common solutions to them. Okay, and here's the thing: if we all share the same temptation, then if we talk about it with each other or to somebody whom you trust, the temptation loses their power over us. But if if you keep it a secret, it's gonna get worse. If you talk about if you can't talk about it, it's getting out of your control in your life. So it's gonna it's going to scare you. And God is faithful because God is faithful. He promises two things. First, he will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up, up against it. And the first one and the second, uh, when you are tempted, he will show you a way, a way out so that you will not uh, give into it. So that's the comforting, uh, co comforting to know uh, that God understands our struggles and he knows exactly what you're going through. When you're going through, through it, he's pulling for you. Even Jesus experienced the same temptation. He prepared an escape route and he says, I'll strengthen you and I'll prepare you. Uh, I'll prepare for escape route. And that's the promise of God. Now, if you don't know the promise of God, then the temptations might be too strong for you. So it looks like it is too strong for you. But if you put this promise of God into your heart, there's no such thing as a very strong temptation. And when you know already, uh, when you already know that the promise of God and still you give into the temptation because you said that the temptation was too strong, I know that they are not telling the truth. They are not being honest with themselves. Why? Because God says that he will not allow more on you that I put in you to bear it up. Okay? Hindi, niya pa, hindi ka bibigyan ng temptation na hindi mo makakayanan. And also God says that with every temptation, I will make a way to escape. So if you, so kung ibinigay ng Panginoon yung mga pagkakataon na yun, you should get out of there. You should escape dun sa temptation. So it is, it is not the temptation too strong for you. You just didn't want to resist it if you uh, get into it. So you wanted to give in. You're not being honest to yourself. So you wanted to give in on that moment. Because if you had, it, you had not want to give in, God said, I will give you strength and I'll give you a way out. Amen? So... Uh, there's no such thing as strong temptations. If we really know God's promise, we will just hold on to it. Okay? Sabi sa Thessalonians, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, The Lord is faithful. He will give you strength and will protect you from the evil one. That, there's the, that uh, praise again. He keeps his promise. He will give you strength and will protect you from the evil one. Some of us believers are not just only afraid of the temptation. They're actually afraid of the devil. So what are you afraid of the devil for? The Bible says, Greater is he that is in you and he, uh, that, than he is in the world. For the, devil to, to, for the devil to get at you, he got to go through the, to, to the Trinity. He should, he, he should go through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's like this. No? It's, uh, he got to go through the Trinity. It's a triple protection. It's not going to happen. You got a triple protection around your life. The only Satan can do to a Christian is to make suggestions. That's the only thing he can do. And if you buy the suggestion and you believe that fear, you just lost. If you buy that an idea and you believe that fear, uh, you just lost. But, you, uh, but he cannot do anything other than uh, give suggestion. And for Satan to get to a believer, he has to go through the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you are in Christ. The Bible says, Christ in you. Christ is in you. The Bible says, you are hid with Christ and God. The Bible says, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that is the triple protection. 
There's no way he can get at you. If you're trusting God at that moment and you're a believer, he says, don't worry about it. I'll give you the strength and protection from the evil one. Amen? So let's go to the third promise. The third promise, uh, God promises to support me when I'm in trouble. That's a good one. God promises to support me when I'm in trouble. He's going to guide me when I'm confused. He's going to help me when I'm tempted. And now he's going to support me when I'm in trouble. Now, what's the difference between temptation and trouble? So there's a big difference. Temptation is inside me and trouble is outside me. Temptation is internal. Trouble is external. Temptation is something to do with my character and trouble has to do with my circumstances in life because uh, we because we live in this broken planet we experience temptations and troubles and Jesus said this he said in the world he said in the world you will have trouble now there are many kinds of trouble it can be physical trouble relational trouble financial trouble, mental trouble, and there are many kinds of troubles and tribulations in life. Bad things happen because of the sin. But God says, I will support you in trouble. And one of the greatest promises in the Bible is Isaiah 43, verse 2 to 3. It says here, and here's what God promises about your future. When you go through deep waters and great troubles, okay? When you go through deep waters and great troubles. Notice it doesn't say it is a matter of when. It is not if. It doesn't say if. It is a matter of when. That means you're going to go through deep waters at times in your life. And great trouble. I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk on the fires of oppression, you will not be burned up, for I am the Lord your God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, yung po ang pangako ng Panginoon. So, look at, the, look at the verse. It doesn't say, when you go through deep waters and difficult, uh, rivers of difficulty, you won't get wet. Hindi po sinabi yun. It doesn't say that. It says, you won't get drowned. You're gonna go Go through some problems that will cost you uncomfortable feeling. Amen. So sometimes you're gonna, but you're gonna you're gonna get wet, but you're go, uh, not going to get drowned. So hindi po tayo malulunod. Dadaan tayo sa mga bagay nyan, but hindi po tayo malulunod. And it says when you go through the fire of oppression, when the heat is on in your life, and it doesn't say it doesn't say it won't get hot. Or it doesn't say it won't get sweat. It says you're, go- you're not going to burn up. So makakaranas din po tayo ng uh, uh, uncomfortable feeling. You, uh, makakaranas tayo ng init. But because of God, we will not going to burn up. So I'm going to make... I'm sure that you're going to make it through. So, yung po ang pangako ng Panginoon. Next verse. Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me and I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses the inner strength into me. So, that's a confidence. Okay? Amen. So, uh it is a very confident way to look at the future. So I can do anything. I can handle whatever God allows in my life with the strength of Christ. Sometimes you're feeling weak because you heard, uh, you heard a problem that's arising. So nakaparinig ka pa lang ng problema and you're becoming weak. Okay? Nang lulumo, yun ang tawag na sa Tagalog, nang lulumo na tayo. But listen to this. The strength I need will come when I need it. The strength I need will come when I need it. God doesn't give me the strength for today for a problem that will arise for next week. Okay? The Bible says in the prayer, 
give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't say uh, give us weekly bread or monthly bread. So we need the strength just for today. And God will not give strength for tomorrow until it's tomorrow. Amen? So lahat po na hinihili na sa Panginoon, it should be on today. Amen? And number four, God promises to repay those who hurt me. OMG. So let's come here for a moment. God promise, promises to pay those who hurt me. He doesn't want you to repay them and he doesn't want you to seeking retaliation. He says, no, no, no. Let me handle this. That's what God says. Let me handle this. Amen. So have you noticed in the world today that people are becoming more meaner and meaner, more hateful, more rude, more uncivil, more unfair? See, if you listen to the news or watch the news, you will just say, oh, man. That's that's just not fair. That's why in the ako nanonood ng news. <laughs> why I don't watch uh, news kasi makikita mo lang na really the world is unfair. But the thing is, God didn't say that the world is fair. It is become unfair because of the sin in the world. So in in other side of the world now, there are people who are living in total poverty. People fighting for survival. There are crimes, street rage are very high simply because they were born into that. They live into that. And us, we get to benefit from all the blessings here. Is that fair? Of course it's unfair. The world becomes unfair because of the sin, as I said. Jesus came to make things right. And one day, they will be made right. But now, life is, life is not fair. Because sometimes good people suffer. Sometimes the innocent get hurt. Sometimes poor people get robbed. Mahirap na, nananakawang pa. Sometimes well-meaning people get abused and are betrayed and are cheated on and on and on and on. So we grieve for that. We should do whatever we can do to correct justice. But there's something more important than the way we feel about it. It is the way God feels about it. And you need to know that God has seen every hurt in your life. And he grieves over and over too. Somebody asked me, where is God when a thousand of Jewish and Christians died during World War II? What I answered him, I said, he was at the same place. He, he was in the same place he was when his son died, grieving. Grieving over man's inhumanity to humanity. So God looks down and sees so much of what's happening in the world today. And he is hurt and he grieves. The Bible says God grieves over and over and, and God has seen every hurt in your life. Every mean word, every mean action, every injustice, every prejudice, bias or anything like that. But I know this. The, the Bible says God is keeping a record of all the ways you've been hurt in life. Did you know that in Psalms 56 verse 8, it says that God stores up your tears in the bottle? You don't even know all the tears you've shed, but God does. He kept on accounting of every tears that you've shed. And that's how much your good, good father cares about you. He really loves us. Amen. The next promise. Romans uh, 12, verse 9. Never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God, for he has said he will repay those who deserve it. Amen. Follow me on this. God is God of love. God is a source of all love. Because he is loving God, he, also, he is also a God of justice. God is just. God is a fair God. If evil tried to hurt his children and not seek justice, that would be unloving. Justice is the same, is uh, sometimes a loving thing to do. The people who have hurt you in life, God said, just trust me. I will handle this. And I've got more weapons than you do. He can do better justice than you can. God said, I don't want to waste your time or your life 
on their resentment and retaliation and revenge and trying to get even because that's going to fill your life with poison of bitterness and God doesn't want you to waste your precious life being bitter. Some of you are still allowing people who hurt you 10 years ago to hurt you today because you're holding on the memory of it. And that's nonsense. They can hurt you anymore. Your past is past. The only way they can hurt you is you're holding on the hurt and you won't let it go. God says, I want you to let it go, not because they deserve it, because they don't. And even us don't deserve forgiveness. But God forgive us. Some people think that he's getting even by holding on the hurt because they haven't, go, uh, haven't got to judge for it. And so feel like I'm going to hold on to it so that I can remember or somebody can remember how this person hurt me. And that's faulty logic. Justice delay is not justice denied. The Bible says uh, there, are, there will be a day of reckoning. There will be a day of accounting. And there will be a day of judgment. And God is very aware of, of what people have done to you. And he's going to settle the score one day. Do you trust him? If you do, just let it go. Amen? So just let it go. So that you can live your life fully. In the fullness. Let me give you the free, uh, fifth promise. The fifth promise is God promises to reward my service and generosity. God promises to reward my service and generosity. Part of God's plan and purpose for your life is he wants you to become like Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is a model of perfect humanity. God wants us to grow up like Christ. He wants us to think like Christ and to feel like Christ, to love like Christ, and to serve like Christ, and also to live like Christ, and also to be giving like Christ. If God wants me to become like Jesus, what is Jesus like? Well, there is one word. He is unselfish. Jesus is unselfish. The whole goal of life is learning how to become more and more unselfish. Because to be unselfish is, uh, because uh, to be unselfish is love. Amen. And God wants you to become like him. God is love. When, you were, you, when, when we were born as a, a baby, we were totally unselfish. Totopoyon. So those babies are really unselfish. Why? They are not thinking about anybody else. It's always me, 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 I, I, I want it, I want it now. So totally selfish. Thank God they are cute, but they are totally selfish, those babies. And it's only as they start growing up, they start learning how to share. And they should be taught how to share. Because selfishness, it is my nature to only think of me and not think about you. So what Jesus like? Uh, that's it in uh, it says in Mark 10 verse 45. Mark 10 verse 45 it says, "I did not come to earth." This is Jesus talking. "I did not come to earth to be served, but to serve and to give my life for many." So there are two important words: serve and give. Brothers and sisters, there are two verbs describe the Christian life, serving and giving. Those two words describe what it means to follow Christ, to serve and to give. If you don't like to serve and if you don't like to give, ask yourself, are you really a Christian? Because that's what it's all about. It's learning to be unselfish. It's learning real love. And how do you spell love? G-I-V-E. That's love. You can give without loving, and you cannot love without giving. You cannot love without serving. And love means I make your problem my problem. Love means I serve your needs, not my needs. Love can always wait to give, and lust can never wait to get. And in heaven, when we're all going to serve God joyfully, and we're going to enjoy it and do it. 
And God put you on earth first, first so that you can practice learning how to give and practice how to serve here. So when you get good, when you get to heaven, you will not be ignorant. Everybody is serving. Everybody is uh, giving. And if you didn't practice that here, so you will be ignorant there. So that's why God makes us to practice it here. So you know how to give and you know how to serve. But that's the truth. In the most of the people in the world today, they are living completely self-centered life. They are not thinking about how, how they can give to God and to others. They are not thinking about how can I serve to God and to others. You know, God is wired the universe in such a way that your life will never make sense until you give it away. You are made by God. You are made for God. And until you figure that out, your life will, will not going to make sense. And God wired the universe that we are rewarded when we do what he does. God is giving and serving God. Everything you have is from the generosity of God. But most of the people make excuses and reveals uh, that reveals uh, being self-centered person. They say, I don't have time for to serve God. I don't have time to serve others. My life is too busy with my activities. Do you wanna do you wanna reconsider that? Do you think God created you and put you on earth just to live for yourself? No. If you're living only for yourself and you don't have, that means you don't have a big enough God. Your God is too small. And that's not the reason enough to get out of bed just for you. And that's a very miserable goal in life. Amen. God says, I want to reward your service and generosity because he wants us to become like, uh, like that. And he rewards it in a great way. You know what? You know what I like in this uh, in in this church in TFCMI. Every member has the spirit of service and generosity. Every member has a part of each. It's a part of each ministries. How many ministries do we have in TFCMI? Each member is a part of each ministry, and in generosity. Every member is generous enough to help others and the church itself. Even the whole church is generous enough to help other churches. Not only through financial, but also physically, mentally, and spiritually. So for people, for you who work in the church ministries, this is the verse for you. Hebrew 6 verse 10. Hebrew chapter 6 verse 10. God is not fair. Ah, God is not unfair, sorry. God is not unfair. He will not forget how you work for him and how you have shown your love for him by helping his people as you continue do. God is going to reward you. That's what he says. God is going to reward you. God is going to reward you and the TFCMI pastors are proud of you, especially Pastor Danny, of course. But that's nothing compared to the reward that you're going to get in heaven. The reward in heaven is going to be based on what you did here on earth. One day you're going to stand and God will say, what you did, what did you do with what you were given? So maybe some people will say, well, I made a lot of money. I get retired and died. Eh, wrong answer. No, you are here for more than that. Are you giving back in any way, in a volunteer way that you can get uh, that you cannot get repaid for? God says you're gonna be rewarded. The same is true with giving. Look at this verse in Luke uh, chapter six, verse nineteen. It was Jesus talking. Use your worldly resources—that's the money—to benefit others and make friends. Okay? That is for eternity and means we don't spend all our money for us. We give it some, we give it a way to help others. And people support the Lord's work and make friends for eternity. In this way, your generosity stores up a reward for you in heaven. You're going to be rewarded. No service, no reward in heaven. No generosity, no stores, no stored up in heaven. Parang credit card lang, no? 
magbigay ka na magbigay then you will have a uh, you stored up in you stored up but this one is i mag mag uh, uh, mag service and you uh, being generous and help the work of the lord then you stored up something in heaven amen so now sir uh, the last and the most important promise of all number six. god promises to keep me safe until heaven god promises to keep me safe until heaven he's gonna keep us safe until heaven i don't want to keep my i don't have to keep myself safe thank god because if it is up to me to keep myself safe i am deep deep trouble there is no way that we can save ourselves god says it is not up to you once you put your hand in the hand of god you may you may want to let go but he's he's not he's gonna let you go he will not let you go and once you are saved it is his job to keep you safe no matter what happens in your future look at john uh, chapter 10 verse 28 john chapter 10 verse 28 this is jesus talking i give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one can snatch them out of my hand so this is a gift he doesn't take it back they will never be perished and no one can snatch them out of my hand so that's what he said when you put your hands in god's hand there are times in your life that you want to let it go i remember you know sometimes we want to do our own thing we are already with god but sometimes we do we want to do our own thing I remember when I was a kid, my mom started to bring me to uh, an evangelical church when I was nine. That was 1982, maybe. And when I turned 23, I have the Lord's experience. It started to be serious in the church. But when I get married, the nature of my work, the friends, the friends from work, it pulled me down in the worldly life again. I became a secret Christian, you know. I call it CIA. What's that? Christian in anonymousness. CIA. So you can you, you be, I become a secret Christian. Although Sister Deng was totally engaged in the church. But for me, outside, if you see me how to talk, how I talk, my actions and my, uh, my attitude, you'll never think that I'm a Christian during that time. And I thought I let go of God's hand. But, of course, one day, God pushed me up again. And when I got into trouble, a physical trouble that changed my life, he was there. I saw his work with my own eyes. He didn't let me go. And I said, this is my chance. I will not waste, uh, I will not waste it again. Because you are in God's hand, no man can snatch you out. One person says, well, you can be snatched out of God's hand but you can jump out of it. And I said, how big do you think God's hand? Do you think it's so small that you can get to the edge of it? His hands are bigger than the universe. You'll never get to the edge of God's hand. You'll never get to the edge of God's love. You'll never get to the end of him keeping you safe and safe. Once you were born again, you can be unborn. Once your name is written in the eternal book of life, it is written in an indelible ink with the blood of Christ. It cannot be erased. Once you are saved, you are always saved. Amen? Thank God. That's the good news. Thank God. We don't know what the future holds. I don't know how many years we've got left. I might lose my faith. I might, I, I might lose my health. I might lose my wife, I might lose my family, or I might lose my mind. But i never losing my salvation. That's the good news. And that means I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I don't know what's coming, and I don't know what's the world going to turn out, but that's not my job. And the fact is, no matter what happens there, one thing that I can count on, He will always be with me. 
and he's never gonna stop loving me and he's gonna keep me safe until I'm safely home in heaven. That's a good news. What if if I really mess up? Well, one person says, what if I really mess up or I deny Christ? Yeah, a lot of people have done that. Look at the next verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Thank you, God. I can be unfaithful, but he's never going to be unfaithful to me. That's how much he loves me. Last verse, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Be confident on this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it, carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ. Amen. What God started in your life is going to finish. God never leaves anything half finished. So you can, be ven uh, you can be confident on this, that God who started something in you is going to finish it and you and you're going to make it to the finish line. Amen. So let us bow our head and pray. Let's pray, uh, brothers and sisters, and say to God, Father, we thank you for your mighty words that strike our hearts. Every word, every meaning with new revelations. We already know what you, that you know uh, our future. You already know what will happen next. Whatever happens, you still love us. And you've set your good plan for our lives. And we're saying today that we want to live the rest of our lives for you, not for ourselves. And so we thank you for, thank you for these promises that you will never leave us alone. You will never abandon us. And we'll never go through anything in our future without you. Brothers and sisters, say this to God personally. Thank you, O oh Father, for your promises that you will guide me when I'm confused. You made the Bible as my compass in my journey in the future towards your kingdom. And I thank you that you promised to help me when I'm tempted. You keep my sight and strength, and strength to be always focused on you. And you even give me a way, given me a way for me to avoid those temptations. Even in troubles, you promise to support me and help me to get through it. Thank you also that you promise to repay those who hurt me. I am not going to waste any more of my time and life or energy on bitterness and resentment. And so I will not hold any more on that hurts and revenge or any retaliation. I'm giving it now in your hands and I'm letting it go so that I can go through my life now with unnecessary weight and with your blessings. And also I thank you for, your, for the promise that you will reward my service to you and my generosity. God, it is already you, our God, our reward here on earth. And what you have given us now is nothing to compare that you will give, you will give to us in heaven. In every day of my life, I pray that you will enable us to grow in serving you more and more and to give you more and more and to others. And Father, most of all, I thank you that you promised to keep me safe until I get to heaven. I thank you that I don't have to work selfishly anything to keep me safe. Knowing and having you is already my assurance that I am safe and kept me safe until heaven. We praise you. We honor you. We pray this in the most precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.